Hello, St. Paul's. Today we continue looking at some of Grant's favorite passages in the Bible. Today looking at 1 Peter 1 verses 3 to 9. This is a fabulous passage that is so rich in praise of God and that praise given because of his grace in Jesus Christ. We're going to do something a little different today. We're going to just run through the passage line by line, sentence by sentence, just to see the richness that is there. It begins, praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It opens with praise to the magnificent God, the one who is the Father of our Lord. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. In his great mercy, his incredible mercy, his amazing grace, he has given us new birth. You must be born again. He has given us new birth into a living hope. A hope that is not just there, but it is a living hope. It, is, it thrives, it moves forward, it, it gives life, a living hope. And it's through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. All of this is about God's grace given to us in Jesus and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. God gives us an inheritance as he adopts us as his own children, an inheritance of his grace, an inheritance that cannot spoil. It cannot be taken away. It's a sure thing. So we praise God because of his grace, because of his great mercy. He gives us a living hope, new birth in a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus and an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. The inheritance, our place in the Lord's kingdom is kept for us. He has a secure location for us. Our name is in, our place is set, all because of his grace in Jesus. That inheritance is ready for us when it is our time. And it is, again, a sure thing. In all of this, you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. We rejoice because of God's grace in Jesus. We rejoice because of the new birth and the living hope that he gives us. We rejoice because of the inheritance that we have kept for us. We rejoice. And yet at the same time, we acknowledge that there is grief because we suffer trials. We live in this world, a world that is full of trials and hardship. And no matter how strong our faith is, we all experience those trials. And though we can rejoice greatly in the grace that God gives us, we grieve because of those trials. Peter went on, these have come, these trials have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith, of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. So those trials have come to build up our faith, to strengthen our faith, and in that strengthening of faith, in that provenness of our faith, Jesus is honored. Jesus is praised. Jesus is glorified. The passage concludes, Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. Beyond the apostles and those who were in the first century with Jesus, none of us have seen him with physical eyes. And yet, because of his love for us, we can love him. His love for us is more important than our love for him, but he does love us and enables us to love him. And I love the Lord. I love the Lord. And even though I do not see him now, I believe in him. I trust him and am filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. It's hard to express that to people who don't know Jesus, but in him we have an inexpressible and glorious joy. The passage concludes, 
for you are receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. This passage is all about God's grace. We give praise to God because of his grace, that in his great mercy has given us new birth and a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus. He's given us an inheritance that cannot be destroyed in any way. And in him, because of that grace, we rejoice, even though for a time we will grieve because of the trials we experience. Trials that will build up our faith and in that proven faith give glory to God, give, give glory to Jesus Christ. And that even though we don't see him, we love him. Even though we don't see him now, we believe in him, we trust him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For we are receiving the goal of our faith, the salvation of our souls. Praise be to God. Let's pray together. Our loving God, we thank you for your, your great mercy, your amazing grace. And we thank you that you do give us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus. We thank you for the inheritance that you give us in Jesus. And we thank you for the opportunity to rejoice and praise you because of all your goodness. We pray that you would be with us in our trials and that through those trials you would strengthen our faith, that our faith would give Jesus glory. We pray, Lord, that you would help us in our faith always, that you would prop us up when we need it, that we might love you as you love us, and that we might always be filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy because of your grace in Jesus Christ, your saving grace. We pray all of this, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you.